Hey everyone, today we are going to walk through the install process for our TEQ Customs Glow Gauges. We are doing this install on a 99 to 02 Forerunner. Um, the process is going to be the exact same throughout those years. So first we're going to um, take note of where these needles rest when the car is off and we're going to at the end just make sure everything goes back to the same exact place um, we do not have to remove the needles for this install um, so you don't have to really worry about anything getting out of place um, but just as a as a good uh, safety net we're just going to make sure we know where all of these sit to begin with so the first thing that we are going to remove um, is this uh, kick panel here. And that comes off with four 10, mm, 10 millimeter bolts. Um, you have one here, there is another down here, there is one down there, and then there is another by the ignition. And once you take those off, um, this whole panel is going to come down. If you have switches here, you'll just need to disconnect the wiring on the back of the switches. Um, but that is all you will need to take out to uh, get this panel off. Next, we are going to remove this panel. Um, definitely be gentle with this panel because they are prone to cracking. Um, so use your um, use a, a soft plastic uh, pry tool or um, something of the like to uh, gently get this off. Um, but first, we need to um, take off the little dimmer. Um, module that is on here and then this is a 12 mil right here that you need to remove then you have four screws that hold um, this actual panel in there is one right down there there is one over here on this side and then they are two up top um, above the actual gauge cluster and once you take those off um, this panel will be free um, once again, if you have a switch right here, be sure to just disconnect the wiring for it. Um, and then we are going to just remove this panel. And a helpful tip to getting this trim piece off is uh, to move the steering wheel all the way down. Um, it just gives you a little bit more room to work with um, and makes it a little bit easier to take that panel out. Now that you have this trim piece out, there are four screws that hold in the cluster. Um, there are two on the top and two on the bottom. Um, the one on towards the passenger side is right above the ignition. And once you take those four screws out, um, you're going to have this whole cluster free. Um, there'll just be a couple electrical connections on the back that we will need to um, disconnect to pull this out of the vehicle. Uh, but once you get those disconnected, we're gonna go and take this over to the bench. All right, so now that we have the cluster out of the vehicle, we're going to go ahead and take the lens and the trim off. Um, first, you gotta take the lens off. Um, it is just held in by a few tabs around the, um, the lens itself. And then um, the bezel comes off with the other tabs, like you see here. Um, and then once you take all of that off, um, the lens will come off and then this black bezel inside will come off as well. Um, and then we'll have access to everything we need to, to install the new gauge. So the new gauges, um, the two side panels come with two different versions. Um, so you're just going to want to go ahead and match up which one you have um, to each panel. So this vehicle um, doesn't have the traction control light over here. Um, so we are going to use this panel without it. And then there is uh, two different versions. Um, one has the four wheel drive light over on this side. Um, if you do not have the, if you uh, have a two wheel drive or you have the four wheel drive uh, indicator in the center here, um, you're going to want to use the one without the four wheel drive. So just match everything up to what you have already and you will have all of the stuff you need. So we're going to start on the left side of the panel here. Um, to take this out, there are two small screws underneath 
um, this panel right here. Um, you can just move it out of the way a little bit. Um, we are going to keep these panels. Um, these are overlays with the cutouts for the lights. Um, so if you um, don't keep these in here, uh, the lights are going to be ridiculously bright through the holes um, and it looks kind of goofy. So we're going to keep these in here. Um, so we'll take out these two screws. This retainer just comes out um, and then we will be able to install the new panels in this spot over here. All right, so we've got this uh, little black retainer off. Um, you'll notice the needle drops down um, when you do that. Um, but once this is back in, it'll go back to um, the correct place. Um, so now that we have this off, we are going to install the new panel. Um, this is going to slide right around the needle and then there are these small um, little guiding tabs underneath here um, that you will need to slide the panel over um, to get it in all the way. So you'll see there's a, there's a little hole here for, uh, for the tab itself. All right, so we've got the first panel on here um, and now we're going to um, put this little retainer back uh, make sure you don't lose these little screws. They're tiny um, and kind of hard to find. Um, goes back on the same exact way you took it off. Um, so super easy to put that back on and then we'll move on to the next panel. So another important thing to mention is um, we are going to line these up after the fact. Um, we're gonna put this back on the vehicle without the lens and the trim clipped in. Um, so you'll be able to move these panels around a little bit. Um, so don't tighten these screws too tight. Um, we'll go ahead and tighten them fully once we have everything um, confirmed that it's lined up on this panel over here. All right, so the next panel um, is the tachometer. So we have the new panel like this. Um, we are going to take off these two small screws right here, and then we are going to slide it over um, like so like that and then it will sit um, over the needle and everything um, once those are off um, another important thing to, to mention is this little rubber uh, stopper right here um, just make sure uh, if you get the needle past that little point um, while you're messing with it uh, just make sure it's back on top of this stopper um, because that keeps it just from falling down into nothingness so we have the second panel in now. Um, it is important to note that you do not want to over tighten these screws. Um, hand tight is definitely the way to go. If you tighten it too much, you can delaminate um, the panel. So definitely um, just hand tight. Uh, don't crank on it too much or anything like that or um, you do risk messing it up. Now we are going to move on to this panel. Um, it is virtually the same as the last one. Um, we're going to take these two screws out. Um, the only difference is you have the reset for the odometer right here. Um, so we will slide the uh, panel over and then move this needle over so we can get it um, over top. But we will get to that in just a moment. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this panel on. First, we are going to slide it over and then we're going to turn it like this um, until we can get the needle through and then we will bring it back down um, just tuck this back for right now and there we go and you see the speedometer goes right back um, to the same place it was before so this panel is the exact same as the other side over here um, it has the little black retainer and then um, it will um, the it will come off the needle um, and then we will slide the panel on uh, the same exact way before and then tighten that back down so we've got everything in here now um, one thing we did notice is that um, on the 99 to 00 limited models only um, you will need to use the panel that still has the little uh, four-wheel drive cut out over here um, obviously you have this in the middle um, but to get the check engine light to line up, uh, you will need to use um, this panel. So you can just ignore that. Um, obviously there's no bulb there, so nothing will ever light up there. Um, it'll just 
you know, it'll just exist. Um, or if you don't uh, care about your check engine light, you can definitely use the other one. Uh, the fuel gauge is the exact same. Um, so the last thing that we're going to need to do is run the wires out of the cluster. Um, there's a couple different things you can do. Um, my suggestion would be to um, just drill a small hole um, somewhere around here on each side and then you can run these through. Um, that would be probably the easiest thing to do. Um, you can also just trim a little section of the plastic out um, and run it like that between the lens and the back of the cluster. Um, these don't get all that dirty, um, but if uh, regardless of what you do, um, you can just put like a small piece of electrical tape or something like that um, over the hole that you drill or the little slot that you cut. Um, and that will just help prevent anything from getting inside the cluster. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back onto the vehicle. Um, we're going to test all of the alignment and everything and make sure all of these lights line up um, with the stock lights. And then we will go ahead and put the lens and the trim back on the cluster. All right, so now that we have everything plugged back in, um, we just turned the ignition onto accessory so we can see how all of these lights line up. Um, so you'll want to, um, with the screws loose, um, you can just move these around slightly and then tighten them back down in the spot that they need to be. Um, and then we will go ahead and put the lens and the trim back on here um, once you've got everything lined up exactly how you want it to be. So you'll have four of these connections coming off of the gauges and those connect to the inverter um, with this built-in dimmer switch. Um, we are going to run all of that up under here um, beside the air vent and then to the actual um, gauges themselves. And then on the power in the ground um, with the included no splice taps, we connected in the black wire um, to the dimmer, um, the factory dimmer. And what this is going to do is um, when the um, lights are off, the backlights on the new gauges will be off, um, but this will turn them on with the um, parking lights and the headlights, um, just like your uh, factory backlights would. So we tap the power into the green wire and we tap the ground, which is the black wire, into the white wire with the black stripe. Um, it's important to note that there is another white wire here um, that does not have a stripe on it. That is not the correct wire to tap into. Um, you need to tap into the white wire with the black stripe. Once that is complete, you can go ahead and reassemble the dash. Um, just a reminder, the order is the trim around the odometer first and then the kick panel um, and the little trim around the ignition. Please share pictures of your completed gauge setups with us on social media. We are at TEQ Customs on Facebook and Instagram, or you can email them to us at teqcustoms at gmail.com. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you.